the Fargo Five. I'm Conrad Fargo. There's nothing to do in Fargo, right? It's uh, no wrong. There's lots to do. It's a fun, exciting town. Uh, that's why we have the Fargo uh, Five. I'm sorry, the Fargo Fun segment here uh, today. We have Pastor Cody Weckerly from Harvest Plains Church. Hello, Cody. Hey. Now, I like to, um, and I mean, Fargo 5 is relatively new, but we did a show for Christmas services, and that was a lot of fun. And so, like like, like m- most, I'm doing Christmas and Easter, and that's about it. So, pulled you on for Easter. I said, let's do Easter services. Let's do Easter. You were recommended to me by our mutual friend, and uh, you said, well, we're not doing an Easter service, but we are, in fact, doing Good Friday. Is that correct? Well, yeah, maybe a little misnomer. Uh, we definitely are celebrating the holiday of the resurrection. Okay. Uh, and so we have a Good Friday service coming up this Friday at 5 o'clock at our location in Mapleton. And if anybody goes on to Google Maps and they just type in Harvest Plains Church, the address will all pop up. And uh, so they can find us there on, I think it's Knudsen Street. It's a little bit... Uh, you know, new for us, so I don't. This Mapleton location the, is new. It is, okay. yeah. So, but they can find information uh, if they go on Google. You, ju- you just go there, go there by sight. That's right. <laughs> yeah. No, we were like I said. Uh, you know, we are a church plant. We planted or started. Uh, if anybody's unfamiliar with the planting language, right? Everything has a beginning. You drop a seed in. So we we dropped the seed in the community five years ago. And for the first four years or so, we have been meeting at the Bank North Theater on the east side of Central Cass School. Okay. So our hope was really to be kind of a beacon of light out in these more rural parts. And I will just say that uh, the church has grown in ways that we did not expect, where we have most of our people who live in Fargo. Uh-huh. And so I would say 70% of our membership <laughs> yeah. drives from Fargo. That's where the people are. Yeah. So Population um, center, yeah. And one day I was driving through Mapleton, realized that there was some development going on there, and they are really trying to create a kind of you know, downtown community for Mapleton. And uh, anyways, made a phone call on a strip mall space, asked if they would be willing to consider bringing in a church. They were super excited about it. One thing led to another, and we finally got our space finished and moved into it in June of this last summer. So So, this is like your, this is your own space now. It's our own space. When we first laid our eyes on it, it was just a space with a dirt floor, but, uh, you know, six months of building it out, and now it's a beautiful, cozy spot. It is not a big church from the road. You can definitely see our sign, but... You know, it looks really small on the outside, and you get in and go, okay, this is actually not as small as I would have thought. But the sanctuary itself seats about 220 people. And aside from the sanctuary, there really isn't a whole lot else. There's a couple of rooms for children's ministry. Every Sunday morning, we offer children's ministry from newborns all the way up through five years of age. Uh, And so there's definitely a a way we try to make it possible for parents to sit in the service and be able to focus. It can be really hard to do that with the tiny tots on their laps. But, uh, yeah, ever since June. So So paint paint a picture for me of what it's like to come and and be at this place so you come it, it the, the parking lot is shared with other businesses or what's the parking it lot? is but we're the only church so yeah. the parking lot is only you know pretty much all to ourselves there's you, a coffee shop close to us but as of now they are not open on sunday mornings so so you typically do a sunday morning uh, uh service or what do you call it uh, yeah not mass mass is a catholic word yeah right? i catholic. was raised catholic yeah so just, sure fyi i'm I, yeah. all my references are catholic when you told me you had a wife i was like oh really <laughs> <laughs> so um, so you come, you, you park there, the service is going to start, you walk in, and you said it seats 220 people. What what size space is that? Is that what is a normal or a, a larger or a typical, how would that compare to my understanding of like a, I walk into those Catholic cathedrals and they seat quite a few, right? 220 isn't quite the size, so this is going to be smaller than that, or what's the feel? What's yeah, the I would say that uh, that's probably bigger than some churches and smaller than other churches. Um, okay. I would say that you know our total space capacity is 6,000 square feet. Okay. So that's, oh, that's big. So that's it's a lot helpful. of space. Well, it's helpful for people to think about it. I'm sure a lot of people live in a 2,000 square foot house or uh-huh. something like that, uh-huh. so just you know do the math. But uh-huh. uh, 
you know, a lot of churches end up being 16,000 square feet or so oh, do they? Uh, with some office spaces and a lot of other rooms for children's ministry. And uh, who knows, maybe one day we'll be there, but we're not right now. And for that reason, I would say that if you join us on a Sunday morning, one thing you'll notice is that, and this is part of the beauty of things, it really is an intergenerational church service. Mm -hmm. And so we've got babies crawling around, but we also have uh, elderly folks as well and empty nesters. And uh, one thing that was unique is just to consider what we started with, which was really with these freshly graduated uh, people. And then they graduated, they started their first jobs and all of that. And we just started with a handful of folks uh, that were really young. And then from there, uh, people would come, they they would show up. I would almost in a certain sense expect people not to stick around because we really don't have a whole bunch of events and activities and, and, and just a lot of programs. Uh -huh. uh, our ministry philosophy is very simple. We really do focus on loving God and loving one another. And so the way that gives gets kind of lived out in terms of our day-to-day -day ministry is that we make sure that we preach through full books of the Bible. And so on a Sunday morning when people come to our service, uh, they might experience something they haven't before, which is that we move verse by verse through whole books, sequential preaching. We call it expository preaching because our hope is really to make things clear to people. I don't and know not pick and choose. And so not you're pick not, and choose. You're not, as the, as the pastor, you're not editing and only showing maybe the easy parts. You're, you're looking at the whole of, of, of the word of everything written there and confronting it. Yeah, directly no, on. exactly. That's uh, amazing. That's we, very cool. Yeah, we would say we're trying to preach the whole counsel of God's word. And yeah. so that doesn't give us the luxury of picking and choosing what topics we think people need to hear. Second Timothy 3.16, if I could quote some scripture to you, sure. says that all scripture, right, scripture being the Bible, all scripture is God breathed and profitable for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the person of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So, uh, you know, really, if we just pick the topics we think people want to hear about, we won't fully equip them for living their lives uh, you know, day in and day out for the Lord. And so, yeah, it forces us into uncomfortable topics I'll at bet. different times, I'll right? Bet. Because That's kind very... of the hot button cultural issues today, uh -huh. whether it's things of justice and social justice or whether it's gender and sexuality and all those kind of things, you're Absolutely. forced to have to wrestle with those. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, I tell people if we step on your toes, uh, it's not that we're trying to step on your toes, but as the pastor, uh, I also have to have my toes stepped on because yeah. I can't avoid subjects. And every pastor who gets up to teach is an imperfect, fallen human being, uh, just like anybody else. And so I first have to be confronted with my own failings and find hope in the grace and the good news of Christ and what he's done for sinners. And then I try to bring that over to people so that uh, even if they are confronted, uh, that they leave with just great hope knowing that there is a savior in heaven who has done all things necessary to draw them to himself so that sounds amazing one more time before we go to our uh, music break here it's going to be not sunday is what we're now we're talking about normally it's sunday this is going to be good friday services where 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 and when it, i'll say the where because you didn't have that off the top of your head it is 649 knutson street suite 103 in mapleton yeah and you so. can uh 5 p.m this Friday. 5 p.m. this Friday. Uh, be there and uh, get more of Pastor Cody. Uh, we are moving to his next song uh, from John Foreman, Lord, Save Me From Myself. We'll be back with Fargo Frequently Asked Questions, so don't go nowhere.